Oh, I need a new intro to speak. Hi. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Good? Had a good day? What do you guys get up to today? It's Friday for me. I don't know when you guys will be seeing this, but it's Friday today. Uh, I got up this morning. Uh, I had a meeting. I went to the gym. I had another meeting. Came home. Shot a video. About to shoot another video. Then I'm going to do some editing. And then I'll probably have a couple of beers and go to bed. So that's my Friday, but how are you guys doing? <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just so sick of saying, hi, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> God, this video, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, anyway, um, today we are going to be jumping into a video that I've been asked to do so many times, but particularly by Chester C. You little, you have asked me to do this video, I don't know how many times, so I hope it's worth it. I hope it's really worth it. I hope this video holds up to your expectations because you have overhyped out of this. <laughs> but yeah, today I'm going to be showing you how to return this guy or turn this image into this image in five seconds using a technique to replace guys that is going to overtake any technique that Peter McKinnon has taught you in any video to date. So watch out, Peter. I'm coming for you, mate. Uh, this technique, and I... Not a word of a lie, it will take five seconds to do. So, without further ado, we're gonna jump straight into it. All right, so, like I said, today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how to replace skies in your images. This is a technique that isn't suitable for all images, but I'm gonna show you two techniques. One technique that is suitable for all images and one technique that I like to use. So if you guys know me, if you've been watching my videos or you know my Instagram, I like to use a technique with Photoshop that's sort of take the best of the old and take the best of the new and bring them together. I don't like to eliminate elements of my photos that make them look realistic. Say for example, with this image that we're editing today, I do not want to get rid of that nice cloud sitting on the horizon. I don't want to get rid of that light source and I don't want to get rid of that nice pink hue that evens out the sky and the foreground. Most sky replacements would go ahead and just cut out, select a mask from the horizon line, dump a new sky in, try to recreate the light source and you end up with something that looks fake. It's the same thing with my horizonless edits. If you guys have seen that video, I'll link it just at the top there and I'll link it down below. Uh, you'd know in my horizonless edits, I don't like to create new reflections. I like to just use the reflections that I have in the images already. And that is a good key and a good technique that you can take into all your edits that will make them look more realistic from now on. So without further ado, Let's get that timer started and I'm going to show you guys how to do it. The basics for this and what you're going to need is you're going to need a stockpile of one images that you've ever taken or that you have gotten from an online source that you either need to credit or you need to purchase from. I personally purchase. I have a subscription to Shutterstock.com. If you guys are watching Shutterstock, I would really, really love a uh, sponsorship or Adobe if you're watching, please. Uh, reach out my email is at tom at tomnoski.com uh, <laughs> but yeah you'll need a stockpile of images that you can use for each of your edits today I'm going to be showing you exactly how I created this particular edit so for that sky what I used was an image from my stockpile of stock photos I have gone ahead and edited it and it is this image here and I love 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 this guy because there's so much texture there's so much color and there's so much I can do to manipulate it so what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to drag that into Photoshop I'm going to resize it to where I want it I'm also going to resize the image here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the crop tool I'm going to change this to a 4 by 5 for Instagram because you probably noticed that the image isn't 4 by 5 already I'm going to drag that all the way up to the top once that finally wants to crop I need a new computer so badly. Uh, I'm gonna drag this to the bottom layer. I'm gonna crop again and I'm gonna drag this up to resize to what I want. I'm gonna just bring this one down again. I'm just gonna bring this one down to about 45 so I know where the horizon is. I'm gonna drag that to there. I reckon that's about suitable. I like the look of that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly take a sample of that layer. 
from the top here. I'm gonna hit Command C, Command V. I'm then gonna to go to Content Aware Scale, drag that up to the top so it fills it out. Bring this layer back up to 100%. I'm gonna merge these two layers so I'm not losing anything. Again, if you know my rules, try to be less destructive, but that's something that you don't need. I don't need that layer floating around. It's just getting in the way. Add a mask to this layer. And this is where we begin. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna grab my timer again, like I did before. I'm gonna hit start on there and we are going. We've passed one second. We're already losing time. I'm gonna hit G on the keyboard, hold shift, drag down, and we are done. You see that? Nine seconds. Peter McKinnon, I don't care what your two minute tutorials are. That was nine seconds to replace the sky. Nine seconds. Nine seconds. Yeah, I told you, I'm coming after you, mate. <laughs> but that is the general gist of this technique. It's an awesome way of keeping some of the old and keeping some of the new and making it look even. Obviously from here, what I'm gonna do and do is I'm gonna grab the paintbrush tool. I'm gonna make sure my flow is nice and low. Actually, I'm gonna change this to opacity because I want to maintain a nice even coat across the entire image. Chuck that around to about 20 and I'm just gonna paint away some of this horizon again to reveal some more of that sky. Make sure I'm keeping this here. And that's about all I wanna do with this. This, um, this luckily is an edit that doesn't require that much work because the sky and the foreground work together well, color scheme wise. And that is the key to this, is you wanna pick two images that work really well together. Another thing that you can start to incorporate is there's two techniques that you can start to blend your skies and foregrounds better. One is by adding artificial light to your images. And how I do that is going to the, going over here, going over to gradient and I have this selected as a preset but you can do it yourself all you need to do is add these four colors over here a bright sort of whitish yellow a yellow an orange a red and a gray color you're gonna go over to here you're gonna change this to radial you're gonna change this to 135 or as close as you can get it and you're gonna change this one to 135 as well and then you're gonna go over here to hard light and the best way to do this is double click on here, bring this all the way down to one. So you've got this nice little dot and I like to bring it off the screen just because the color can get too intense. I'm gonna bring this back up to 135. Now this is the first one that we add and you can already tell where my colors come from in my images. Uh, you're then going to bring this down accordingly to what you think. I usually keep it around 60 to 70. You're then going to duplicate this layout, drag it over the top so it covers the whole image and then you're gonna bring this one down even more, around 35. I double click it, drag it up and away a little bit more. And bada bing, bada boom. Let's play around with these a little bit more. I'm not liking all the reds in the sky. Drag it down a bit. And that is how I took this sky here and turned it into this sky in nine seconds plus, we'll call it, say, a minute to add that. So <laughs> it's as simple as that for, for sky replacements. And this is a good technique to keep some of the old and add the new to make an image that looks realistic. Again, I want to clarify this. I'm not trying to trick anyone with my edits. I'm not trying to confuse people. That's why I make these videos. That's why I show my before and afters on Instagram. I'm just trying to make your edits look as realistic as possible because that's what I like. I like my edits to look realistic, even though I know they're not and even though you know they're not. So from there, you can go ahead and add adjustment layers to blend it a little bit more. You can chuck it back into Lightroom and play around with the colors. Maybe add some gradual filters, maybe add some light in there. You can do whatever you want with it. So we're gonna run through a quick overview of how I did that. Before I do that, I wanna show you guys another technique that you can use. If you've watched Peter McKinnon's video, you'll be familiar with this technique. All you need to do for this one is go over to select, select and mask, and then all you need to do is make sure the top one is selected. Nice small brush. Now this might struggle a little bit here because there is not much contrast between the foreground and the background, and just paint away your foreground. Obviously this does a lot better with when there's detail on the horizon, my technique is only gonna work for images where there's not a lot of detail or you want to keep enough of the sky above the detail that you can sacrifice some of that sky for your new sky, if that makes sense. But for some of the techniques where you just wanna get rid of the entire sky, there's nothing pretty about it, there's nothing that you wanna keep 
all you need to do is go ahead with this technique and paint away the foreground. I'm gonna do this real quick, just for the sake of time. I'm not gonna worry too much about the details. But if you needed to add details, you could go over to this brush here. This brush is less like the magic wand and more just like a paintbrush and you can paint away here. Blah, 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 blah. You get the point. All you need to do hit then is hit okay and that's gonna mask away your sky and then all you can do is bring a sky in the background. Once you've done that, you can also combine our two techniques. So you hit G, make sure white is selected and then just drag from the horizon and drag up and bring some of it back. So you combine, you can combine the techniques, you can use techniques, you can use not use techniques, it's up to you, but there is a whole bunch of ways of replacing skies. But to run it over it again, all you need to do is make sure that you've got your sky selected underneath and had it scaled up, add a mask to your layer that you're removing sky from, and hit G on your keyboard for gradient. Make sure that your gradient, the first one over here is selected. If you grab any of these, it'll absolutely whackify your image. Uh, whackify, Tom, what the <laughs> make sure that the first one here is selected and then what you want to do is hit G hold shift on your keyboard so the line remains straight and then just drag away here black selected and that'll just remove some of the image so it's as simple as that for replacing skies again if you've enjoyed this video if you found value in this video or if you've enjoyed any of the videos that I'm putting out please, 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 please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment and head over to my Instagram and check out my Instagram. Now that you know the ins and outs of these secrets, you're probably going to pick up on a lot more of my Instagram. So I'd really appreciate if you could head over there and uh, give me a like, leave me a comment and leave me a follow. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.